the making of a man or a son or a daughter of God in the context of today's society begins with a bastard. You and I are bastards because we don't know anything about godliness. Now you might as well say amen because the house in which you grew up in what you watched on television, what you did in college, everything that you were a part of was outside of the covenant of God. And don't holler about you grew up in the church because even the churches nowadays can't hold a candle to the word of God. So the first thing you got to realize is that if God is going to do anything with you, let's first realize where you're starting from. Because you got a whole lot of folks who say, well, God told me this, and God, you can barely spell God. You mean dog. Because according to the record, what the books say, you ain't never repented. So how is it you can be so spiritual and you've never told God you're sorry about the stuff you've done, the places you've been, the things you've seen, and the things you participated in. Everybody started in square one, which was the bastard square. And let me help you real good now, because the Bible is not talking about here In Hebrews chapter 12, a bastard in the sense of, well, I know who my daddy is. Well, if you wasn't born knowing your daddy was Jehovah, if you wasn't born with some notion of holiness in your house, then you were born a spiritual bastard. So the making of a man and the making of a righteous woman begins with God dealing with two bastards. A bastard in today's text is someone who's outside the covenant because they were born into a culture and a 21st century setting that is naturally against God. How far is it against God? We have a debate in the black church over whether or not homosexuality is all right. How far have we fallen against God? You got choir members going together. And there's so many, Lord, there's so many children look like the preacher in the church. Name of two eggheads in here that look like me. And I got them the right way. So we are born into a cult. Listen now. Listen now. You talking about marrying a virgin. Folk got. Folk. I remember when my wife and I got married. I had a problem because she moved too much at night. I wasn't used to sleeping with somebody else in the bed. But you know, modern day folk got an answer for that. Ain't nobody getting married without shacking. In our community, shacking is the new marriage. What, you didn't know? Go down the church roll at ABC Baptist Church and find out how many people live at the same address that ain't related and got different last names. So we're in a culture and a setting that is naturally against God even in the church. The preacher can't preach. He get to preaching too good and some of his members are going to pull him to the side. Preacher, you got one more time to preach at us. And I really don't know what preaching at folk is. We preach what the Bible says. 
So we're born into a culture and a mindset that's naturally against God. Paul put it this way in Romans 8 and 7 in the New Living Translation. He writes, the sinful nature is always, not sometimes, always hostile to God. You ever notice how hard it is to do the right thing? And how easy it is to do the wrong thing? <laughs> That's that sin nature. It's easy to do the wrong thing, and it's hard to do the right thing. And the writer continues that that sin nature never did obey God's laws, and it never will. So when a person, my friends, who is born anatomically a male, either number one, revolts against his God-made choice from before birth of fulfilling his destiny as a man by choosing a homosexual lifestyle, he is reflecting a bastard mentality. Denying his God-given sonship. And secondly... If a man who was born anatomically a man by the will of God bases his manhood solely on his penis through sexual immorality, he too is reflecting a bastard mentality. Now listen, now let me help you real good. Let me help you real good before we go any further. I know some of you who are not used to this may say, You know, the kids are in here, and he's saying that. But let me rest assured by telling you this. Your kid done heard more at school than I'm going to say today. So, so, So don't let that take your mind away from what I'm saying. Because your children have heard much worse. And that music you listen to? So don't have me to get started now. So your children hearing the word of God, which is what they need to hear. So don't get distracted. Because when a man chooses to be something, either a player, a playboy, a pimp, or either a homosexual, in either case, he's going against the nature of God and reflecting a bastard mentality. Now, some of us who are saved, I'm getting to us, and have considered ourselves saved for some time, we too still don't understand the making of a man. Now, we do understand that sexual immorality is wrong. And we also understand that we got to go to work to support our families. And we also know we got to be good examples to our children. And now, my friends, if we were to take a survey from today's women, and they would all agree that a man who will be faithful to them is a good man. They'll say a man that's got a job is a good man. A man who's a good example to my children is a good man. And I encourage all men to live up to that profile. Yet the meaning of our text would also argue with that definition. Yes, my friends. Those things are quite important. But you can still be a bastard and doing those things. The making of a man does not begin with a man's goodness. Rather, it begins when a man is placed under God's idea of goodness. Because a Negro got in his own mind what being good is. Baby, ain't I been good to you? No, you hadn't been good until you place yourself under God's goodness. The making of a man begins with a man being placed under the discipline of God. Hebrews 12 and 5 reads in part, My child, don't ignore it when the Lord disciplines you. And don't be discouraged when he corrects you. You see, many men believe that just because they're in church and just because I'm trying to do the right thing, that God ought to bless me. And when God don't bless me because I done been the church.